of a buy-in today, we are with Eloisa Bora, and she has done so much research. She is a historian, a librarian, and of course, an archivist, because you have kept so much work um, or, you know, documents well, pertaining ar to... Artifacts, too. Artifacts, too. I, when, when can we see the artifacts? <laughs> well, I'm getting artif excited. My artifacts don't go back to the Spanish area, but I do have a lot of artifacts that they're post 1900s. Wow, that is so interesting. Okay, so let's move on to Filipinos here in Los Angeles. Kailan ang unang Pilipino dumating sa Los Angeles? Uh, what research have you unearthed? Well, this is not my research. It's the research of uh, uh, William Mason, mm -hmm. and he was the uh, uh, the uh, uh, historian for the uh, history division of the Los Angeles uh, uh, Museum of Natural History. Okay. And he was a very well respected uh, um, researcher that specialized, he specializes in ethnic history of Los Angeles. He was researching uh, the Chinese in, the Phil uh, in Los Angeles when he realized that the word Chino did not mean Chinese. Anyway, I'll, a little more about that later. Anyway, his research tells us that among the, uh, pe among the ones selected to found the city of Los Angeles is Antonio Miranda Rodriguez or Antonio Miranda, that's how the Spanish would do it. Um, he and his daughter were, were actually on the way until his daughter caught smallpox and, and they had to be uh, left behind in, in Loreto. And it took him two years to get to uh, Los Angeles. I see. And then we also have, uh, you show us in this slide, uh, the first census in yes. 1781. The first census of, of Los Angeles actually has his name and his daughter's name, uh, and his daughter on it. And the second one in 1782 had it also. But by 1783, uh, it was taken down, and he actually arrived here. And people, uh, pe most, uh, some people say he died and he never came. But he got here, and he, uh, but his his allotment was already given to somebody else. I see. But he he had a very uh, uh, skill everybody wanted. He was a gunsmith or a ironsmith, and they needed one at the garrison in Santa Barbara. Mm hmm So that's where he moved on to. Um, let's talk about having last names such as the. Spanish makes it very difficult for us to really trace back our roots, right? And as you mentioned, Chino was a word that they meant not for the Chinese. Yes, it was a, a word actually, according to Mason, that was used to have anybody from the ship from China. So as a matter of fact, Mason um, says that on the west coast of, of um, Chino was the, the term applied to natives from the Philippines. Mm. to distinguish them from the Mexican Indians, since everybody was called Indios, you know. That's so that right. That was not white. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he, he actually says that, that Miranda was Filipino. And there's the preeminent historian, Hubert, How, Howard, Hubert Howe Bancroft. Now, you know that the rare book collection at UC Berkeley is called the Bancroft Library. Mm -hmm. So he, this is a very well-respected man who had a multi-volume set uh, on the history of California. And he says, uh, that Miranda was not a China man, offspring probably of an Indio mother and a father of mixed Spanish blood. So we know, you know, people were not calling Filipinos that, but that's, that's what he was, and he wasn't Chinese. Okay, and then we also have a soldier in leather, Soldado de Cuera. Cuera. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, he was not a poblador anymore. You know, he was not a settler anymore. He had actually a-, a Higher a, rank. A higher rank. He's, he was now a Soldado de Cuera. Uh, uh, but in addition to being the gunsmith, uh, um, before he died, William Mason uh, had a conversation with me where he said that he found a report filed by, by Antonio Miranda, which meant he was literate. He could read and write, which was very unusual for a non-white person in that era. I see. Okay. And so we also have in the Presidio Chapel in Santa Barbara, if you want to visit yes. uh, the remains of, of Antonio Miranda, he's buried in the church at, in uh, the chapel that's part of the Presidio in downtown Santa Barbara. Not at the mission, but downtown at the Presidio, which, which pre-dated the mission. And he's, 
Uh, also, if you go there, there's also a tile that's, uh, uh, that the Filipino-American community of, of, uh, of Santa Barbara had put commemorating him that's just by the altar. Okay, so this is something that you can go to and visit. All right, well, all of this information is uh, very new to me, but this is something that is just the start of a rich history here in America of us Filipinos. So when we return, we're going to share with you more interesting facts on Kababayan today.